If you want to learn the Transformers role-playing game, you need to know how to fight Decepticons, hide from humans, and navigate an alien world in your alt mode. The Essence 20 role-playing system that Transformers runs on uses skill tests to measure success. If you're trying to accomplish a task, whether you're attacking, observing, or dancing, you need to roll a skill test. You'll be rolling a lot of skill tests in any given situation of the Transformers role-playing game, so it's important to understand how skill tests work. Step one, what are you doing? Are you attacking an enemy, racing a stunicon, trying to blend in? If you're attacking, you need to narrow down how you're using your attack. Weapons have effects and alternative effects. For example, your basic unarmed attack can stun a creature for one round, or it can deal one damage, or grapple, shove, or trip them. Before you attack, you need to declare what effect you're aiming to deliver. It's especially important to announce this before you roll, because alternative effects often downshift your roll. What your character is trying to do determines what skill you'll use, what target or targets you're affecting, and how. Step two, how are you doing it? Once you know what you're trying to accomplish, you and your GM work together to figure out what the rules say about it. Sometimes the rules are specific. If you're attacking, the weapon designates the skill you need to use. Other times, there's flexibility. If you're trying to change a target's mind, you could use deception, persuasion, or even intimidation. If it's an animal, you could use animal handling. Some actions are so specific and outside the box, you'll need to make a call. Like if you're using a door sticking off your back in bot mode to jam a giant gear. Even when the rules are clear, the situation can overrule what's written. For example, attacking with a grenade is an athletic skill test. But what if you're not throwing a grenade? You're sneaking it into a seeker's cockpit. Deception, finesse, or infiltration make more sense based on how you approach the task. Step three, modifiers. Before you roll your skill test, you need to figure out which dice you're rolling. Start with a d20 and the skill die of the skill you and your GM settled on in the previous step. Then, your GM tells you if you're rolling with an edge, a snag, an upshift, or a downshift. When situations are in your favor, you can gain an edge or one or more upshifts to your roll. Gaining an edge means rolling two d20s and taking the higher result. You can only gain an edge once on a skill test, as it represents a major swing in your favor. Upshifts, on the other hand, are incremental improvements that represent small changes in your favor. If you gain one or more upshifts, find your skill die on the skill ladder and move up that many steps. Let's say you're firing a blaster and you have d6 targeting. An ally lends you assistance, giving you upshift one. Another ally, a field commander, uses issue command to give upshift one to anyone who fires. You also take the time to aim, giving you another upshift one. That means your D6 moves up three rungs on the skill ladder, giving you a D12. If you're a higher level character, you might have as much as D12 targeting. In that case, upshift three would mean you don't even need to roll you succeed at the skill test. If you can manage another upshift, you'd even automatically critically succeed. Downshifts work the same way, but in the other direction. Let's say you're firing an artillery cannon using its blast alternative effect. You attack a 20 foot radius, but it means your attacks are less precise. You suffer downshift one. If you have D6 targeting, that means you roll D4 on your skill test. It's possible to gain upshifts and downshifts on the same skill test. In that case, start at your skill die, go up a number of steps equal to your upshifts, and down a number of steps equal to your downshifts. If you get upshift three and downshift one to your D6, you end up with D10 skill die for this roll. Finally, a snag is like an edge, but you take the lower of the two D20 rolls. If you have both an edge and a snag on your roll, they cancel each other out. Step four, determine difficulty. The last thing you need before you roll your skill test 
is the difficulty. In the case of a skill test without a target, the GM decides how hard what you're attempting is for the average character, from extremely simple to nearly impossible. That sets the DIF of the skill test somewhere between 5 and 30, with most of them falling between 10 and 20. If the skill test has a target, like when you attack, the GM determines which defense the skill test applies to. Generally, the defender gets to choose their defense, within reason. Physical effects normally target toughness or evasion, and psychological effects target willpower or cleverness. Some rules, like the ballistic weapon train, dictate what defense they target. Others, like the outrider focus perk scramble, dictate the defense they use. If an effect that dictates a defense targets a creature with a rule that dictates its defense, the defender's power takes precedence. Step 5. Roll Skill Test It's time to roll your dice. Add your d20 result and your skill die result together. If you are specialized in the skill and the skill test reflects your specialization, you roll your skill die and every lower die on the skill ladder. For example, if your skill die is d10 and you're specialized, roll d10, d8, d6, d4, and d2. Add the highest result to your d20 result. Step 6. Results If your total equals or beats the difficulty of the roll, you succeed. Apply the effect of your skill test, such as overcoming an obstacle or dealing damage to a target. If your skill die is above a D2 and rolled its highest possible result, and your skill test succeeds, you've scored a critical success. If you were specialized, and any skill die above a D2 rolled its highest possible result, and your skill test succeeds, you've also scored a critical success. That means you succeeded and gain an additional benefit. Similarly, if your result doubles the difficulty, you succeed with a high degree of success, granting additional benefits. That's the basics of skill tests. Figure out what you want to do and how, modify your skill die, roll the skill test, and determine your results.